Hello Internet, Dan Ellis here with the 299 Scouts, Dangerous Skills or Dangerous Places. I'm here with Sergeant Craig and we're at our $6 million rifle range facility to uh, set up him to this rifle. So we got him behind Draco here. The first thing that you want to talk about when you're setting up somebody with a rifle is you want to build up that cheat piece. Now whether you're shooting like a M110 and you're at school and you got to build up with like old knee pads and foam, you know, or you've got 2010 or in this case this, uh, this stock has an adjustable cheek piece, you want to build that up so that it's resting right there on his cheek. When people talk about cheek wells, they're talking about like, oh, I put it on my chin and I push up until I can build up enough cheek to have like the proper cheek well. Well, that's honestly the wrong answer. All right, the important thing to note is that we have this cheek piece high enough so that he's making bone, cheekbone to stock contact. Honestly, it's not very comfortable, but I know that I have bone on stock contact and that's pretty consistent throughout. The next thing we're gonna set up, and we've got all the tools to do it, is we're gonna set up his eye relief. We're gonna set up the scope to his eyes where you have that distance. You've got like maybe a, you know, less than an inch of eye relief, depending on which kind of optic you have and how forgiving it is. When he's in the prone, he's gonna be at the forward edge of that eye relief. And when he's up uh, at a seated, seated or standing position, he's gonna be at the back end of that eye relief. And so when we set up his eye relief, we wanna make sure that we're not fucking him by having his eye relief on the prone be at the back end. And when he goes into like the seated, kneeling, or, the, or a standing, he's gonna be you know, getting all kinds of scope shadow, he's gonna be struggling on that. The next thing that we're going to be working on is we're going to be making sure that the scope is level. We're setting up with bubble levels on the rail, on the optic, in the chamber, and we're going to have a plumb line downrange so that we're not fucking around with gravity. You know, there's no question in our mind once we have that plumb line set up that that is vertical and that if this rifle is set up properly, that uh, there's no kent whatsoever in his optic to his weapon. The last thing, and the, probably the most important, least important thing that we're going to cover is something called parallax. And parallax is the most important thing because if you don't understand it, you can really throw your shots. I say it's the least important thing because to be honest with you, generations of snipers have gone their entire military career and never fully understanding parallax properly. So we'll go through that in this video. All right, let's move on to the first step. The eye relief is the distance between the ocular lens and his eyeball. And now each scope, each optic, each brand has a slightly different eye relief. Usually the range in your eye relief is less than an inch. So when he's in the prone, you notice that his head is further closer on the rifle. And I'll demonstrate later when he's in the seated position, his head's going to be further back. And when he's shooting standing, he might be further back as well. So when that distance where he has a range of eye relief, he moves his head forward. So move your head forward, Cameron. And like, do you see scope shadow? And then move it back until you see, do you see scope shadow. Right there. So yeah. So his eye relief range is somewhere in between those two points. And so we want to set up his rifle so that when he's uh, in the prone, he's at the forward edge of that. And when he's in the seated, he's in the back edge of that. And what we don't want to do is really screw him over where if he's uh, in the prone and he's already at the back edge of that eye relief range and he's going to move back for a different kind of positional shoot, it's going to be out of spec and he's going to have all the scope shadow and it's going to be a rough day. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen up all of our points and we've got our adjustable t torque wrench which is I highly recommend you pick up one of these and uh, you, for your rings up here you're only going to look at like 15 inch pounds that you want to put on that on uh, torque them. You don't want to over torque them and potentially damage the tube of your optic. again so you're in your neutral position yep let me know when you see shadow hmm. uh, keep your hand away for a second well, that's pretty good right there we're still yeah. move your head forward a bit let me see is it right there on the edge because if not I have to move this ring it'll be fine probably yeah no it's right there all right it's it's probably good then. Yeah, it's actually almost even better. And as you can see that when he's in the seated position, his eye is further back from his optic. So since we moved his eye relief 
move their rifle back a little bit. It gives them a little bit more uh, room to play with, so he's not seeing a bunch of scope shadow at the edges of his optic. If your scope isn't level to your rifle, it can start tracking off to one direction or another as you start dialing on elevation, and this can really throw your shot off at long ranges. The way we minimize this is by checking the level. There's levels that go in your chamber, little bubble levels you can put on the rail and the top turret. Uh, the true answer is that there is no perfect answer. Each little rail, each little turret cap is going to be slightly off from the factory, and so you're never going to get a 100% great answer. These bubble levels aren't all that accurate to begin with. What are you doing? You want your shelf level or not? And if I say yes, you're gonna provide that for me with that? Yes, see the bubble? I'm familiar with the bubble, Morty. I also dabble in precision, and if you think, you can even approach it with your sad, naked caveman eyeball and a bubble of f***ing air. You're the reason this species is a failure, and it makes me angry. You're drunk. So we do our due diligence. After checking the chamber with a purpose-built level, links in the description, we check the rail, we check the deck that I'm leveling on, I check every flat surface on the on the weapon I can and I back that up by hanging a plumb line as far out as is reasonable so that I can ensure that my vertical reticle is pointing towards the center of the freaking planet. Sure beats what I learned in sniper school where they just said dial back your power and uh, just make sure your reticle is lined up with the center of your bore. Alright so we set our torque wrench to 15 inch pounds and I've cut through the footage here so you don't have to watch me tightening a bunch of screws but uh, you can do this like lug nuts or you can just make sure that you're not applying uneven tension to any particular nut. Checking your level uh, periodically to make sure that when you're tightening this down it's not pulling you off level and shifting your reticle or anything like that. One thing to note on torque wrenches is even though it's breaking over it doesn't mean that you can keep cranking on it because it still puts tension on that screw and it's still tightening it ever so slightly. You can definitely over torque it if you're not careful. So don't overthink it, don't overdo it. Just 15 inch pounds and or if you're using a uh, Allen wrench, just go ahead and give it a quick hand tighten. Now, uh, the only thing I didn't depict in this video is I like to put paint witness marks on my ring nuts holding the rings to the rifle. Add a little bit of paint mark to that, add a paint mark to any of those screws so that if they start moving under recoil or shifting around, I can see that at a glance and ensures that uh, I'm not, my scope isn't loosening up on me during, during firing. I'd probably pretty much kill myself if I went through a whole package with having, collecting excellent data for my rifle just to find out that my rings were loose. <laughs> Alright, now I'm in double check. There. Cool. What's up, man? Could be a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good. All right. Pretty good. It's pretty good. All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about today is parallax, and parallax is described in the textbook as the phenomenon when objects appear to change position because of relative positioning. So now I can relate this phenomenon to something everybody's experienced. When you're riding in a car, the trees and telephone poles closer to your car appear to be moving much faster than the mountains and clouds off in the distance. Now obviously, neither of the mountains nor the trees are moving. It is your vehicle that is moving relative to those positions. In order to understand parallax as it pertains to your rifle scope, you have to understand focal planes as panes of glass between you and the target. As you use the side focus on your scope, you're dialing forward and back through these panes of glass. If your target is in one pane of glass and your side focus or parallax adjustment is dialed to a different pane of glass, you've introduced two different points to which you can introduce that phenomenon of parallax just by changing the relative position of your head. The objective is to dial forward and back with your side focus until your reticle is resting on the and focused on the same point as the target. 
so uh, setting up your optic to eliminate parallax is a multi-step process. In the old days, they used to tell us just to aim at the sky or put a white sheet of paper in front of our scope and just crisp up that reticle using your ocular focus so that the reticle lines are sharp and clear and in focus. Now this is an incomplete answer. What you really want to do is pick a target maybe 100 meters out and adjust your ocular focus until that reticle is crisp and clear but not only that is crisp and clear when you first open your eyes like you're walking into a bright room or uh, you're just waking up you don't want to give your eyes any opportunity to adjust and focus that reticle for you you want to have that crisp and clear as soon as you open your eyes that tells you that that is absolutely focused for your eyes without your eyes having to strain to make it happen so now for the frustrating part You'll bounce back and forth from your side focus, which is also called your parallax adjustment, and your ocular focus, trying to focus on that target at 100 meters out, trying to make sure that the image is as crisp and clear as possible, along with your reticle being crisp and clear as possible. Once you think that the reticle and the objective are both in the same focal plane, now you do the test. Ten. Okay. So, reticle's on focus, the target's on focus, right? Yeah, now, I mean, now, for the most part. Now, without dis disturbing the rifle, nod your head, so you have to like, kind of like... Yeah. And if the reticle moves, then you still have parallax, and you have to like, do it again. Yep, still got parallax. So, like, as you nod your head, you can twist the, the side focus, the, the, yeah, the, parallax. the parallax adjustment. So, nod your head, and then try to... Yeah. Welcome to the frustration zone. For a good while, you'll be chasing ghosts, getting frustrated, working back and forth between your objective focus and your ocular focus, the one with the reticle in it, trying to get them in the same focal plane. Once you have the target nice and crisp up and focused, mess with your ocular focus and try to get that crisp up and focus, and work back and forth, nodding your head throughout the whole ways until you've eliminated that shifting of movement caused by the parallax effect. Remember to give your eyes a break as well. You don't want your eyes doing any of the work. As soon as you open your eyes, you want a reticle that is crisp and set to you, and then you can just adjust the parallax according to what range you're aiming at. Remember, as you shift between targets, you have to check your side focus, your parallax adjustment, each and every time, or else you're not gonna be in the right focal plane. Each and every time I shift to a new target at a new distance, I adjust my side focus parallax adjustment, nodding my head until that reticle sits absolutely still on the target, not being disturbed. If that tells me I'm in the same focal plane as the target. So crisp up the target as best you can and then go back to the ocular focus, you know? Because you have a little bit of range on that too. Yeah. And that's that's moving that reticle slightly too. Right. So that's, yeah. I'm so lost right now. Yeah, no, it's definitely not one of the easier things to do. But once you have it set, man, you don't really have to mess with it again, you know? And I, I want to do this at like 100 meters. Yeah. Okay, that's a little bit better, but... Oh, that's even better. Okay. Yeah. I see it, I see it. <laughs> it isn't a conspiracy theory. Yeah. Okay. I can see where I, I need to spend quite a bit of time mm -hmm. at 100 meters doing that. Yeah, and that's fortunately like you already like did the hard part. You set up the rifle, you set up the the level, you set up the the fucking uh, the eye relief and everything like that. This is something that you, you're at the range and you can kind of like you can tweak it a little bit. But then once you have it set, you know, and you lock this ring down. And then, like, all you have to do is, like, as you change target distances, just mess with the side focus, parallax adjustment, and you'll be on target. You know, like, nod your head until it's set. It's like, okay, cool. You know? And you and shouldn't need to change the ocular focus. Not again. Not after you have it set up first time. You know? At 100 meters, that's yeah. the ideal. At 100 meters, yeah. Okay. I don't, know, I don't know if that's the ideal, but... That's what you do. I mean, that's what works <laughs> yeah. for you. Yeah. Alright, so this is the end result of all that work. This rifle is properly sized for me, and hopefully my spotter is about the same size of build and uh, has the same requirements as me, because I do not want to be sitting behind this gun all day and all night. We're going to be switching off, and uh, we're not going to be pulling that gun off the line so we can put his rifle up there. We're just going to be switching positions. So hopefully 
my spotter can also use those same measurements for me uh, comfortably. But this thing is set up so as soon as I sit down behind it, I am comfortable, relaxed, and I can hold that position for hours if necessary, you know, waiting for that one perfect assassin kill shot. All right, Internet, I hope you've enjoyed that video on rifle setup. Now, generations of snipers have gotten along just fine with uh, just good enough, you know, whether it's taping uh, sections of mat, knee pad material onto your stock to build up that comb so that it gives you a, a good cheek rest, or it's not fully understanding how parallax works and making sure that your reticle and your objective, uh, your target, are in the same focal plane. A lot of people have been just close enough and have done just fine enough, but sniping and precision shooting is all about limiting as many variables as you can, and the good foundation that you build by setting up your rifle properly the first time it's just going to set you up to be that much more consistent. So, hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see more videos on precision shooting or sniping, you know, let us know in the comments and uh, we'll make much more videos. This is actually my favorite topic. So, uh, let us know. And until then, man, take care. Keep training.